Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Patricia Moraes and I am the Grants and Events Coordinator of the Inter-American Teacher Education Network, or ITEN for short, an initiative of the Organization of American States. I'm pleased to welcome you all to this webinar, one in our series of webinars by the title of COVID-19, Teaching STEM in Quarantine. Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Patricia Moraes and I am the Sorry about that, technical difficulties. Um, before continuing, I'd like to briefly introduce I-10 to those of you who are not familiar with us. The purpose of I-10 is to um, improve the quality and equity of education through teacher education in the Americas. And to do so, we offer funds and activities for educational leaders with the intent to resolve problems of policy and practice related to STEM teacher education in which STEM refers to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. To learn more about us and how to get involved, visit our website at www.oas.org forward slash ES forward slash I-10. The link will also be shared at the end of the presentation. Um, so don't worry if you didn't catch that right now. Given by teacher fellows and participants and supporters of the I-10 project teams, um, the series of webinars objective is to support the efforts of teachers during this time of quarantine. To join future webinars, again, please visit our website, um, which will again be shared at the end of the presentation. Um, this evening, we're pleased to have a presentation from um, Marcelo Kaplan from the Columbia College in Chicago. Uh, Marcelo's presentation will last for about 40 minutes, during um, which your um, participants are, are welcome to present your questions in the Q&A tool um, uh, on Zoom. And um, at the end, Marcelo will answer a select number of questions. Um, this webinar will be recorded and the, the recording will be linked to the I-10 COVID-19 webinars webpage and in approximately 24 hours you will receive a notice that the recording has been uploaded. Um, the message may also serve as evidence that um, of your attendance in place of a certificate um, should you need to show it to your administrators. Additionally, we would like to express our gratitude to the Educational Portal of the Americas, which is providing support to transmit this presentation via um, their Facebook, um, live via their Facebook page. And a special thanks to our donor, the US Mission to the OAS. At the conclusion of this webinar, um, we ask that you not forget to complete a brief survey, which helps us um, determining future webinars. And without further ado, I um, will turn it over to Marcelo. Thank you so much. And um, Marcelo, I am going to stop sharing and <laughs> present, um, and you can take over from there. Okay, good evening, everybody. Uh, like I said, my name is Marcelo Kaplan and I am a associate professor at Columbia College Chicago, that is an art and media school. But we, uh, I am working trying to promote science, technology, engineering, mathematics in the community for a lot of time. Now, uh, one of the things that I want you to understand is that everybody now is confined. I am now transmitting from the basement of my house and this is, I, and I need to alter different ways to be able to be in touch with my students. So I just left my position. I am in a, in a little table that I built to myself. This table has two cameras, one that you can see me here. So if you want to believe that I am a human being, yes, I'm a human being, I am here. And here is where we can work and show our work with our students. Uh, one way we can do this stuff, it's simple. There is two webcams and I am connecting the stuff through a program that is free that called uh, OBS, Open Bread, uh, Broadcast uh, Software. And with this, you can make a lot of different uh, interactions that could promote you to be in touch, although we are confined in our, in our houses, to a lot of people in the way that we are doing now. 
the big idea of this uh, activity is to show that we can learn science and technology, engineering and mathematics also with the limited resources that we have. Uh, generally, we think that we need a lab or we need a lot of good stuff that is good. If you have good stuff, you can also pr promote more. But the point is that now we don't have the access to these resources and we need to be able to do whatever we can with what we have. So what I will do today, it's a simple activity. I call it simple, but nothing is simple because this could be as complex as you want. Uh, that start uh, with a simple problem and we will solve this problem using very complicated material like oh, cardboard that is very useful and rubber bands and sometimes we will use a little bit of hot glue if I need it or staplers and that's the resources that I need to make an activity today. So I will put this stuff on the side for a moment. And like in every good engineering activity, if I want to start a problem, I need to define the problem. And my, my problem is I have a ball and I want this ball to be throw and fit any kind of, uh, any, I want to throw the ball and need to fit inside, okay? And I want to repeat this stuff all the time, but, now it's very simple because I am close, but what happened is the ball is one meter or two meters from me. So this is one of the things that we need to say. And now we start the problem. I have my ball and I want to throw the ball. So one of the things that we can, now we start the, uh, the project, the, 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 the brainstorming that we want to find how to do this stuff. One of the things is, okay, I remember that we have a, a rubber band and the rubber band, it's uh, having the capability to store energy and we can start develop a lot of uh, uh, material about what is energy and how we can use energy, how we convert energy one shape to another shape, etc. But now we have the rubber band and our goal is to move the ball outside. So I can put this stuff and try to throw it. I don't believe that this is successful. So now we need to figure it out different ways to throw the ball. So one way I try with my rubber band, another way that I can do is, okay, I have here a piece of cardboard. Wait a moment, please. I want to turn this stuff here. So, so I can see what, what are you seeing? Okay, we have here a piece of cardboard, okay? Because the cardboard, when, when you go and buy cardboard, if you pay attention, the cardboard is building in lines, okay? It's, it's a corrugate cardboard. It's a corrugate cardboard that go like this. And um, if I want to make a tension, if, I tend to, if the lines are going in these directions and I try to make a tension, the cardboard will survive. But now if I bend it, look what happened. Oh, I just break the... The, the resistance of the cardboard and that's it. This stuff will not work no more for me. So one thing that I can do, if, if I have long material, we can have one a piece of cardboard that the lines are horizontal, uh, vertical like this. Oh, we can do something that say, okay, I have my cardboard and I will put two pieces of cardboard together to make it as sturdy as possible. And this will be the base of my new device. I want to, I want to make a device that will throw this, this ball. So now we have here a rubber band. I will attach the rubber band to some place. We can do it like this, okay? But I know that the rubber band will fill, will, 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 will fall. So what we can do is uh, we can take two rubber bands, okay? And we will cut it. We can cut every rubber band, okay? And now what I'm trying to say is, okay, I need to figure out how to, and everything is solving problem. I am doing this too fast because we have only 40 minutes and I want to be able to answer your questions. But the point is that all this stuff, it's a process in which we are uh, trying something and we are failing and we are improving and we are moving one step ahead all the time. So now we have these two rubber bands. I can attach these guys here. If I have a stapler, I can use a stapler. 
okay i will use stapler because it's faster not we can i will show you another way if you don't have a stapler because i need to assume that what you have is what you have there is nothing you cannot go to the store and find nothing so we put one here and we put the other one here and i have now my rubber bands that i can make a little knot here i will not do it now for a moment and i can put here my ball let's make a knot here so we can show this and after this we will improvise something else okay so i have the knot and now we can put my ball okay i, I lose one okay so i can put the ball here and i can try to maintain the stuff and send it okay this is number one good trial but the point is that i don't know how much tension i am giving to the to the rope to the to the rubber band or i don't know in, uh, what i can do with that so, so if i want the ball to be secure in one place we need to build something that will put build the ball in a way that they will not move and will receive only one direction of movement that is what i want remember our goal is to be able to throw this ball and put it in any direction that we want but we want to be able to predict what i need to do to repeat the same activity once and again and again and all the time the ball will go where i want so one thing that we can do we can put this stuff into a little chair that i bought i bought i, I built okay that is again a piece of carbon cardboard over in l and we put these two side cardboard so the ball will fit there and will not be any friction between the ball and the cardboard so if i am putting now my device and i take my little chair opa and i take my little chair i can do my first trial and let's see boom okay so this the the ball fly very good but also the lit, little chair fly so i need to go and bring it back because i need her i need the chair and now what we can do is okay we need to be sure to attach we need to be sure we can attach the uh, chair to the rubber band but also i want to be able to pull the rubber band and the chair as one so now we can use again cardboard we have rubber bands i found this this strip in my house okay i don't know from where it is but i am using it and what we can do now is we can we can be sure that we can connect this in the in the center as equilibrium as possible now let's see look i am pulling this stuff so i can pull my rubber band and we will add the chair here and again we can use maybe a, we can use hot glue or we can use a stapler today the stapler is saving the day okay what i did it's i'm a stapler the rubber band on the on the little i call it a chair for the ball and now we can put the stuff like this and look what happened i can pull and i can throw it if i put my little ball inside okay we can boom no oh, doesn't work so we need to improve this model and to improve this model we have another interaction that it's maybe we need to put the rubber bands that are going in this direction from here and you can try and you can continue so i was working in this stuff and when i say i i was playing a student because i am again i i know what i want but i don't know how 
and that's a process that we want to develop together. So this is my first intent, my my first go, my first uh, trial works more or less, and now I have a better one that I did here. That at least this worked better. Let me see. This that was. Okay, this stuff come here. Okay. Now I learned that the rubber bands need to go inside. And how I learned this stuff is by exploring what happened. So the rubber bands go inside. I can pull this stuff and I can throw my, my ball as I want. So this is a way that I can now safely throw the ball. Okay, now I'm running out of ball, so I will go to pick them back. So I have now what they call it my launcher. If you want to call it a catapult, so be it. But I love the word launcher too. So now that we develop this stuff, I say, okay, what happened that now I can throw the ball? How I can be sure that the ball will go all the time to the same place? Hmm. So we have here first one variable that will be how much how much I will pull the rubber band from equilibrium. I am not calling it force. I am not calling it impulse. There is a lot of things that we can call it. But for the moment, I know that I have my rubber band in equilibrium, and I can make in my um, in my uh, device, I can make certain marks and I choose two centimeters because I like even numbers. So we have four, six, eight, and this could be the place where I know I am pushing the uh, rubber band. But also we can change another variable that will be our angle, okay? We know that if we put in a steeper angle, the ball maybe will be farther or higher and again we need to be able to measure this stuff because remember at the end we want to throw this ball all the time to the same place so what we can build it's a stand for our launcher and the stand has also measurements okay we can make here a, a line a set of lines from zero every two centimeters, again, I like even numbers. And now that we have these measurements, I know that this high is 10 centimeters. And I like, again, round numbers too. So I am choosing the numbers that I this work for me. I, there is no a formula, there is not a kind of a recipe or a construction manual. Okay, I want to be sure that my platform it's fitting here okay and now we know also the high and we know also the length from the place where the the from the high and we have the adjacent uh, side and if i know the length of the adjacent side and the opposite side of the angle that I am throwing, this is the angle that I am throwing. So I will be able to say, hmm, I can change the angle by changing this on my, I, on my uh, launcher, for example. So if I don't remember mathematics, we learn mathematics because this stuff in some place in the curriculum is, okay? That say, okay, uh, I don't know what is the angle, but I know that if I make this adjacent side smaller, the angle start to increase. And now if I go to the side, let's put it here. If I go to the side and put the ramp in 10, and if I have here, this is the 10 centimeters, and we have 10 centimeters, we know that this is the opposite stand, the adjacent stand, therefore the tangent of this angle will be equal one. And I remember um, some place, if not, I can go to my calculator and the tangent of one, it's 45 degrees. So the, the tangent of 45 degree will give me one, so 45 degree. 
now we have our literature that is made of what? Cardboard, rubber band. I put here a, a little straw because I didn't have a stapler when I built the stuff. So I make two little holes and I don't want the, the rubber bands to pull up. So I put a little piece of something. And leave it there. And now I am ready to start to explore my device. This device will have a couple of variables. Let's see which variables we have. I can fix how much I am pulling the string. And this will be one, oops, I will put this up. Touch it here, or I can attach with something else here. But we can do four, six centimeters. So I know this stuff, the how much I can pull my rubber band. So this will be one independent variable. That is the how much I pull the rubber band, and I can measure this stuff, and I can document it. Okay, I can have a other variable will be okay. I can, handle. I can start with this. Uh, Divided by uh, no um, ten divided by twenty four are tangent. They will give me the angle. But the important thing is that if I don't know the mathematics, I know that there is a relation between this length. Angle, I can still to collect data. What happens if I put my ramp in twenty four centimeters through this? What happens if I put in twenty? So I know that I am changing the angle by changing something that I can mark very simple in my piece of cardboard. So here we have a conundrum. We have two independent variables that I can control. And also we have other variables that are the type of ball that I will use, et cetera, et cetera. So let's assume that all the stuff will remain constant and I need to choose now in every scientific experiment, I need to have only one independent variable. And I, ha I have here two. So I will choose that in our case, for the first experiment I will do, my independent variable will be the how much I am pulling the rubber band from the equilibrium. And we will maintain the angle, a parameter of the experiment that will be constant. Okay, so now I have a full tool that my, I, I, I just built it in a couple of minutes. And this full tool will be used by my students to, st to learn, oh, to play, how I can throw the ball to certain distance, okay? And let's scan recording for one angle, take several lengths and see what happens, okay? After this, we can have all the time the opposite uh, selection will have the parameter will be all the time throwing it with certain specific length okay like imagine six six centimeters in this case okay and we will change the angle for every throw and see what happened and we will collect the data and in this stuff i will be able to now to see okay if i have a, an angle of i don't know i put it although I, I it's not an angle but i will put my 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 bar in 18 centimeters and I pull this stuff until six, every time I throw, the ball will go where I want. And I achieve my goal. And now the point is, okay, what does it mean? Mean that my student or me that is playing with my, with my toy, it's learning about a lot of how to do an experiment, how I can control my variables, how I decide what I am controlling and what it's a parameter of my experiment. And I will find my goal, that is to throw a ball and put the ball where I want. Let's see if my device works. Okay, I believe that works, but we need to try it. You don't need to trust nobody. You, sorry. Okay, bye-bye ball. So now that we have a device and my students could spend, my student, no, my, my children could play hours to try to figure out what happened. Now we can use this learning moment that, okay, I want to know what happened using a online tool that is a simulation. 
So now I build, I am excited. I want, I want to know what I need to do with this, with this catapult or this launcher that I just built to be able to be, to be successful and achieve my goal. But I can learn more about this stuff. And to do this stuff, we are using a simulation and I will move to my other, my, to my computer. And let's come back and try to use the simulation. Okay, so let's go and go to this step. Now you are seeing my the simulation. It's a FET simulation. Okay, um, this FET simulation it's more or less is more or less reproducing what we just built with cardboard. We have here three different uh, variables that I can control. First is the high is the high of my launcher. Okay, I can, in, in, my, in my own experiment, I can launch from the table or I can launch from the floor and I need to decide what I want to know. So this is one of my variables that I can control, the high of where we start. We can change also the angle. Okay, so we can change the angle and we can change in, in our case, in our uh, little launcher, we changed the length of how much I am pulling the rubber band. Here, I can decide what will be the uh, initial velocity that the ball will take when it's leaving the cannon. They will leave in certain initial velocity that I can fix. It's like I am fixing the, how much I am elonging the rubber band. I can decide where I will put my cannon in the, in the high. And also, I can decide which angle. So we have real three independent variables that I can play with them. And in this simulation, we have a lot of more things that we can now start to learn with our students that say, OK, let's choose and pick up a football. I like football. When I say football, I mean soccer, OK? Uh, and uh, we will, for the moment, we will not have a consideration of the air resistance and we want to see the vectors that are working in my in my little ball when it's moving so let's see what happens so let's put this stuff in zero because i like zero uh, let's put here two meters and let's put an angle of 25 degrees why i am trying to see what happened and let's put the velocity of number 10 i like i, I told you i like round numbers and now I will shoot the, the cannon and see what happened. Boom, oops. We were, we were seeing, I will stop the simulation here. And we can see that this is the trajectory of my, of the ball. Now imagine that this is my target. So what I can do, we have three different variables. Generally, people start to play with everything. So what we can do is instead to play with everything of every one of the three variables, I will start to play with one of them only. And I will remind the other ones constant. So let's go with the angle, okay? So let's go to 35 and see what happened. Uh, 30, sorry, and see what happened. Boom, oops. So let's continue increasing. Uh, now we have 35. Let's see if we arrive to the to the target. Ah, it doesn't arrive. Let's go to 40. No. Let's go to 50, uh, 45. That, by the way, this is the maximum distance the gun will do, and we can prove this step. And sorry, doesn't matter what I will do with the angle. Okay. Now, the angle, ne the the ball never will hit the target. So we know that with this initial velocity, the movement of my, my other independent variable is not enough to hit the target. So let's clean this stuff and let's try again. So I need to give to my device a initial velocity that will be higher. Let's put 15 and let's put 45 degree. Let's see what happens, okay? And Again, we are exploring now. So I change one parameter and let's start to collect the data again. Let's see what happened. Whoa, now I pass. And you 
can see what happened with the vectors of the velocity. We know that we are when I am when I am uh, throwing the ball, the <clears throat> the velocity in the horizontal axis is constant because we don't have any resistance on the air because we didn't select to have it. So the velocity will be constant. And the only thing that will stop my the movement of my little ball will be when they hit the floor. That's the reason that the horizontal component of the velocity is constant. Look at this. But what is changing is the vertical component of the velocity because at the beginning it's going up, after this is going down because we have a force. Let's see the forces that are acting on the device. Okay, we have acceleration. So we have the acceleration is in yellow. And you can see that the only acceleration we have is the gravity that is constant. There is no friction, no nothing. If I will, if I will try with friction, we will see that we have acceleration in the opposite direction to the movement of the ball. Let's see. It's very, very small. We cannot see it. Okay, but it's, it's a very, very, um, force a very very small force that is uh, stopping the ball to move let's take this up to make it simple let's clean let's clean all this stuff and now we'll say okay let's try to make an experiment with it in the same way that we did with our catapult so let's put the target in, in for, for a moment take off the target and what we want is to know what happened if i have a an angle a constant angle let's put 35 degree, what happened with the velocity? Uh, with, the, with the distance that the, the ball will move in every initial differ, different initial velocity. So I will try one. Uh, let's, try, let's start with 15 because I like it. Okay, so that's the distance. Now I know the velocity initial, we can take notes of this stuff, let's take notes. And we put it, now I take my pen, will be easy. We have velocity initial and the distance. So the initial velocity was 15 meter. And we know that the distance I need to measure. So I will go and measure the distance. So we go here, take the meter. Let's put the meter. in zero here and let's move the meter until the stuff okay and the distance is 24 meters let's write it down 15 meters per second sorry and this is 24 meters i apologize for my writing it's not working well in the with the tablet so now we will do another drawing so if i want if i want to try let's go to 14 meters per second and see what happened. Let's throw it. And we can measure the second distance. And we can collect the data. And the data is 21.2 meters, 21.2 meters. And the velocity initial is 14 meters per second. This is exactly what I did with my, uh, my little catapult. I was changing the the initial, velo the initial velocity by changing the length of the string. Uh, let's go to 13. And let's throw it again. And now we can measure this stuff. And it's 18.5 meter. This is 18.5 meters. And this is 13 meters per second and let's go again and you, you understand what i'm doing i am playing with my simulator like was my um let's do it again now with 12. and now we have enough data to make a graph and find a trend we can measure this stuff before i go to the stuff that is 16.1 this is 12 meters per second and this will be, we say 16.1 before, no? Yes, 16.1. So here we can make now a graph. We have this, uh, we have a velocity, initial velocity, and we have distance. 
and the higher the velocity the lower the distance and you can have here the slope and you can be able to say okay now if i put my target in let's say here i will move the target i will put the oh, not this one i will put the target in 22 okay well, let's, let's go it far away okay what i need to do do i need to increase the velocity or decrease the velocity we have the data and this is the kind of things the kind of thoughts that i want my students to have i want them to be able to use the simulation to make a parallel to what we did in our in our construction and now we can learn and collect real data or uh, simulated data that is equal to the real data and compare what i want to know what i need to know if i want to hit a target in some place so i know that 20 let's put it here we have this one was 24 and this is 28 and i know that every one that i go it's more or less three meters far three meters between every velocity so if i have here 24 and have here 28 if i go to 16 i predict that i will hit something at 27 meter and if i go to 17 i will be at 30 meters so i don't have nothing in the middle i i would like to put 16.5 but i don't have 16.5 so let's try with 16 now and see if we hit the target uh 16.5 i throw it do i hit the target yay because the target is bigger <laughs> so in this way i am i i am able to do exactly what we do in the real world with the little cardboard and rubber bands and we can try this stuff in this kind of device that it's powered by a very power uh, by university of colorado it has a lot of uh, simulations this is the fed simulation and i don't know if you can read here on the screen it's fed.colorado.edu dash sim and after this you can go and continue finding there is many different kind of simulations this is the one that correlate the work that I did with my catapult. So I did something hands-on and I can go and test it in my, um, in my work, okay? And now I want to share with you two or three other resources that I am using uh, generally with my students. Let's clean this stuff. And let's go, for example, electricity. You want to play with electricity? You can build circuits that I will not do it now because you don't have the material, but okay, batteries, everybody know what it is, and lamps, everybody knows what it is, and we understand more or less what happened, and we can build very simple circuits, and I am now being very sloppy because I like stuff to be nice, but okay, so this is it. Oh, look at that. I have a closed circuit. And we can say that the charges are moving in one direction and we can say the conventional current go in the opposite direction and i will be able to measure the voltage of the lamp for example and i can measure the current that is going through the system too okay this stuff is coming here okay and i can continue playing with this stuff and this is another resources that i can go to my table and build with lamps and today I was teaching a little bit about electronics and introduction to electronics. So we use a, a breadboard. I want to show you something like this. Okay, I will go to my, uh, my table. Oh, I moved this stuff wrong. I will go to the table. Okay, although now for this stuff you need resources, but okay, this is a breadboard that I have resistor, LEDs, I have a set of batteries too. And to test this stuff, we can use also another simulation. I will leave this stuff here so you can see it. And we can go again to my other board and we can go to my other simulation that is Tinkercad okay that also allowed you guys to play with batteries with protoboards exactly in the same way that 
people could do it in their um, in their houses or in their stuff and you run a simulation and i have my leds on if i take apart the circuit the circuit will not work if i put the led wrong the stuff will not work etc cetera, etc cetera. so what i'm trying to say is that there is many many other resources in online this is tinker tinkercad.com tinkercad has a lot of different uh, emulations and simulations that you can use and these are they are free uh, and you need to i okay you have three design we have circuits and by the sequence when you go to the circuit you can have uh, also if you like to explore arduino okay you can my computer is dying today so you can go here in the list of materials and you have an arduino okay okay we have here an arduino and you can have the code oh we don't need to sorry just delete this one okay yes okay you have the arduino and you can have how to put the code and also have the possibility to do a uh, block diagrams so these are one of the simple tools that you can use in real life and bring it to stuff i went from cardboard that is um, let's put my image now so we can go to the questions i start from cardboard i move to simple leds that if you have it good if you don't have it you don't have it now because we are in, in confined that is very difficult to to reach to material or if you go to a higher level you can go and also play with simulations that has an arduino simulation so this is more or less my 40 minutes of presentation that i want you to see that stems we can do stem although we are in the basement okay uh, we have a lot of resources i say in the basement because i am in the basement okay i am for the past four months i am here in the basement and there is a lot of access to free stuff that it's uh, in online now if we have no problem with connectivity there is another issue we need to deal with so this issue of remote learning is not only about how what what i can do the issue of remote learning is about how I can motivate, motivate my students or my children or my youth, whatever is the designation that you have in your countries, to be able to be inquiring about what you want them to learn. So Patricia, we saw for the delay, I think that we can open questions if someone has a question. Absolutely, no, um, that, was, that was great. Thank you so much, Marcelo. Um, Everyone, uh, please do submit your questions via the Q&A um, tool here on Zoom. I do see, all right, Danelle Hogan, um, what is your favorite STEM activity? I don't, my, I don't have a favorite one because I develop a lot of different activities. Uh, what, I, what I will tell you is that one that I like and I cannot say that I like the most because if not, someone will get jealous, is to building musical instruments because there is a lot of science and mathematics behind all the process of building musical instruments that many people are totally oblivious of all this stuff. And this helps a lot when you deal about exponential and logarithmic functions and you want to do proportions. And for example, if you pay attention, you have a string, when you play the, str when you play the string, you can see the frets and the thread has a pattern. Why we have this pattern is very, very interesting. And there is a lot of things that we can learn about the physics of the sound and the mathematics of music. This is one that I really like because make everything to come together very, very harmonic. But after this, everything that I can use with my students that make my students to think and think critically and will, will sound very crazy maybe, but that they can make and take their own decisions about what they need to do these are my my favorite activities in which i am not leading them they are trying and they feel what they work what doesn't work and they are conferring with this them between them and they succeed in accomplish a goal because it's not only about oh i finished my work or i finished the worship 
I built something that do what's supposed to do. And this is, for me is a feeling of satisfaction to see my students that they can accomplish this kind of task. Wonderful, thank you for that, Marcelo. Um, we have Jessica Thompson asking, is STEM like an integrative approach to learning? Um, I totally believe that we have, uh, in our, our student has only one brain. Okay, there is not the, the piece of brain that deal with mathematics or the piece of brain that deal about science, the piece of brain of technology. Uh, what, we want, what we want is to be sure that everything that we are doing is motivating the, I would call it, is uh, awakening the intrinsic motivation of the students. So they will be curious about, oh, I need to know this because I need for IBC, not because I need to pass the test. So the integration will be natural in the moment that, oh, I need to, for example, I want to build a, a string that sounds in a specific frequency. So I need to learn about, okay, how I make an experiment to test what's the frequency. What are the parameters I can change in the string that will do it to make the sound that I want? Which kind of material? I, and there start to be a lot of questions that are coming because, um, students want to achieve something. And you are not telling, I, I can tell you exactly what to do all the time. But the, the, the way that I like to, the students to develop their knowledge is by them to ask in their own question and try to find in their own answers. I love that, Marcelo. Thank you so much. Um, we have Bay um, Rivas asking, would you teach concepts before hands-on activity or after? Um, I believe that students don't want to learn about any concept that they don't need. So the, the point is that if you expose them to the, I call it, you want to call it hands-on activities, okay, I will call it that the process of exploration about I want to do something specific. And I feel that I cannot do it because I don't know A, B, C, D, and I don't know how to overpower this stuff. They will come to you and they will ask you, could you help me? And they say, okay, do you know that for A, you need to this, and there is where you can, they, they will be able to receive the, the, the content that you want to teach them because now they are in need of this content to their own interest, their own gain. All the time, we want to develop the intrinsic motivation of the students so they will be the one that will lead the questions and not you with the content. I need to teach the content because it's in the curriculum. So the point is that if the content is the curriculum, let's bring an activity that will motivate the questions about the content. I love that. I told Marcella today that if I had a teacher who taught me that um, when I was in school, maybe I would have appreciated math and science a little bit more. Um, do we have any more questions? I haven't gotten anything in the Q&A. Um, okay, we have any favorite picture books or books? Uh, to me, uh, this question, I was thinking about, uh, oh, I have a lot of good books that I like it. And in this moment, the one that I remember that come to my mind is a book that called Momo. Uh, it's from the author of The, the Never Ending Story that talk about a little, little girl that is trying to save the world from the gray people with the hats that they are controlling the time. It's very, I like it. Sounds amazing. Um, do we have any other questions? I don't see anything in the chat or in the Q&A. Uh, okay. All right, we do have more questions. Is, this, um, is the STEM education program harmonized or standardized with the curric um, curricula of primary and secondary schools locally and regionally? How can teachers make sure that these trainings can be incorporated in their local programs? That's a very... Um, it's, a, it's a very complex question that I don't have the knowledge to answer this one because all my, all my training is in informal education. And I know that it's not what you want to hear. But the, the point is that 
we have formal education that they have the rules and you follow the rules. But if I want to promote my students to be active learners, I need to introduce this, I will call it multidisciplinary approach in which they will be the leaders in the, in the learning process. Uh, I don't have any better answer than this. Yeah, I think that's, okay, well, um, the person responded, I appreciate your candid answer. Thank you. Um, indeed, I think these are very, and, and especially in regards to STEM education, I think it's, it's still very much um, in terms of a, of a teaching method or it, it's still very much open to interpretation by different places in both in the United States and the other places as well. And the way each place that um, interprets it determines how they, how and if they actually implement um, methodology. So it's, it varies a lot by, by country and by state and all of that. Um, do we have any other questions? I don't see anything coming in. Um, this, is your, this is your opportunity, everyone. If you have any questions for Marcelo, please do um, send it in the uh, Q&A tool. We have Juan, Juan just said, um, the challenge when designing an activity is to know the limits to adjust it to the subject being taught and the scope of the project. Totally, totally. You have your own, uh, an activity is not a, a, a recipe. An activity is something that fit your mind, you, you have your, your, your plan during the year that what is what your students to accomplish. So you have your goal, you have your objectives and the activity is only a part of this goal. It's not something that I do because I need to fulfill four hours off. And I agree totally with, um, I believe it was uh, Juan or Jose, I apologize. Juan, yes. Uh, uh, that we need to be aware of this stuff, that activities by itself is not, is, is not conductive. The activity is part of a process. If you are teaching uh, um, in any kind of uh, subject and you need, for example, to use any kind of resource, for example, let's say a logarithm, okay? And you do something with music and you go to the scales, you will figure it out that the scales are building in a logarithmic way. So the musical scales and, uh, and you can go and inter make the connection with between the, the, the sound that you produce and the mathematics that you need to produce this sound. But the activity by itself is not the, the center point. The activity is a, a tool for you to motivate your students to be able to work with you. Like we did here, uh, the reason I start with the catapult today was because I assume that if you are like me, we are now uh, in a in a kind of quarantine that we don't have access to a lot of things. And uh, we need to use whatever it is. So I find cardboard, I did something with cardboard. With the same cardboard, I can make little, um, um, little cars, for example. I can cut routes and I can make little uh, axes and put a rubber band and pull the car and see what happened with the car. Again, that is what I can do now when this, pandemic will disappear or will shall pass, we will, we will see ourselves that we have a new set of tools, a new set of um, approaches to our students that will be improving all the time what we are doing. But for the moment, like I say, we are trying to do the best we can. And I, I believe that you are doing the best you can in, in, in your respective countries, because this is the, the right thing to do promote our students. We like, I like STEM because I am an engineer. I love it. I love to build stuff. Okay. And, um, and that's it. If you have any other question I am able to answer, I will answer. All right. Um, thank you so much, Marcelo. I don't see any more questions coming in. So I will give everyone maybe another second or two to submit any questions that they may have before 
we close out the session. And again, as a reminder, this, um, the recording for today's session will be available in about 24 hours in our website. I will post the, the address to the website in just a moment. But um, please do know that you will be able to access the recording for this again and, and watch the, the demonstrations that Marcelo gave again, which I think were so cool and so, um, and so informative. And um, all right, I don't see any more questions coming in. So Marcelo, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again so that, um, so that folks can see the, uh, um, the web address for, the, for I-10 where they can go and, and find the recording. And I will, I will like thank you to everybody that have the patience to be with me for this hour. I know that you are all starving like me or oh, you are after dinner and you want to go to relax. So thank you very much. And I hope that this contribute to your, your work with your students. <laughs> thank you so much, Marcelo. And thanks everyone um, who joined us today and who submitted your questions and, you know, just in general, took your time to be with us today. We really appreciate it. Um, once again, we will have, there are other um, webinars coming up and you can also access previous webinars on our website at www.oas.org forward slash en forward slash i10. And please do visit our website. You can also check out all the different ways that you can get involved with i10. And, um, and once again, thank you so much, Marcelo. I can't thank you enough for um, such an amazing presentation. It was so interesting, so cool and innovative to see how much you can do just with everyday items that we all have in our homes um, to teach STEM online to, to our students. So really appreciate you taking the time to give us that um, presentation. Thanks a lot. You are welcome. Thanks everyone, have a great evening, bye-bye.